This episode, Wiggle Rama. We're going to go over some of the new features of Final Cut Studio 2, feature an iPhoto tutorial from the Mac Tips Daily Podcast, and poke around our website in notes from the blog. The Mac Media Cast Episode 2 begins now. Welcome to the second episode of the Mac Media Cast. I'm your host, Joseph Nilo. First off, let me thank everybody for the overwhelming support that we got after our first episode back after a long time. Very glad that you guys are all still out there and being supportive of us after all this time. So, um, Let's jump right into the show. This week I want to do an overview of Final Cut Studio 2, which is shipping this week. My copy is in the mail somewhere and it's headed towards me. I'm very excited. So let's talk about what is new in the new suite from Final Cut. Final Cut Studio 2, Apple's award-winning suite of creative tools, has received a major overhaul. Here's a look at the highlights of what you can expect in the big black box, shipping now. Final Cut Pro 6. New to the core program of the suite are some great features. Open Format Timeline lets you mix source material from different formats on the same timeline in real time. Apple ProRes 422 is a new codec that gives you 10-bit HD quality video at standard definition file sizes. SmoothCam uses Shake's powerful optical flow technology to smooth shaky shots. Soft, normalize, and gain controls give you more control over your audio. Motion 3 comes of age and further establishes itself amongst heavyweight motion graphics programs like Adobe's After Effects. Finally, a 3D environment with cameras and lights. With that comes 3D text behaviors and particle emitters, vector-based paint strokes, point tracking and match moving, and integration of Shake's professional retiming, image stabilization, and smooth cam. Soundtrack Pro 2 offers nice enhancements to an already solid multi-track audio editor. Surround sound mixing made intuitive and easy the Apple way. Automatic Audio Conform, which tracks changes in your Final Cut Pro project and keeps your audio up to date. Podcasting features, such as easy enhanced podcasts. And professional audio post-production features, such as advanced take management and the multi-point spotting display. And the brand new program Color, featuring the color correcting power of thousands of dollars worth of software to the affordable Final Cut Studio Suite featuring support for standard depth, high depth, and 2K film project resolutions, intuitive workflow through colors rooms, dramatic color effects and cinema quality signature looks, and best of all, tight integration with Final Cut Pro 6. Last but not least, some nice upgrades in Compressor 3, a new interface and expanded format support, dynamic video filters and new geometry controls, and the same optical flow technology we mentioned in Final Cut Pro and Motion for use in sophisticated retiming effects. Going in-depth into all these features and the new ones I didn't mention here are beyond the scope of this quick highlight trip. Stay tuned to this podcast and the website for more in-depth information over the coming months. I can't wait to get my copy of Final Cut Studio 2. It's on its way to me right now. So keep an eye out at MacMediaCast.com where you can expect tutorials on the brand new suite from Final Cut in the upcoming weeks and months. Next up, a tutorial on getting info on your pictures in iPhoto from our friend Jonathan at the Mac Tips Daily Podcast. Today's tip, iPhoto EXIF info. Every time you take a photo with a digital camera, it stores some information about that image. This info is called EXIF, E-X-I-F. It stands for Exchangeable Image File Format, and it's a standard for storing interchange information. Most digital cameras today support them. The information contains certain elements that can be useful. For example, it contains the original date and time the image was taken, the image size, the name, what kind of camera was used, the exposure settings, such as the aperture, the shutter speed, the focal length, and a whole lot more. Here's how you can get to it. Open iPhoto. Now, click on an image to select it. Once you've done that, press Command-I. Or you can go to the Photos menu and choose Get Info. Now a box should pop up with three tabs. 
photo, exposure, and keywords. You can find the info I mentioned earlier on the photo and exposure tabs. Now the keywords tab tell you what keywords, if any, that you've assigned to the photo. Also you can add check marks to the keywords that you want to add to the photo. I hope you find this useful. So thanks Jonathan for that great tutorial. Now if you'd like to hear more stuff just like that, check out his website thinkmac.net and uh, subscribe to his Mac Tips Daily Podcast. Uh, keep an eye on his website as well. Uh, in the upcoming weeks we're going to be doing an interview over there between uh, him and me and I'm looking forward to chatting with him a little bit about Macintosh. As always, if you'd like to become a Mac MediaCast contributor, drop me an email at macmediacast at gmail.com. We're looking for your news, your product reviews, your tutorials. Um, send us an idea and we'd love to play it. Now this is our regular segment we call Notes from the Blog, where I talk a little bit about what I blog about during the week at MacMediaCast.com. Let's check it out. Things are more or less starting to shape up at MacMediaCast.com. I'm actually enjoying blogging again, so be sure to add us to your favorite RSS reader and I'll do my best to feature tons of stories, news, product reviews, and whatnot as it relates to Macs and media. First off, this past week I jumped on my soapbox and wrote an article inspired by a recent This Week in Media episode where they covered the importance of educating yourself if you're going to start or continue a career in media or technology. I couldn't agree more and added a few thoughts for those of you who are keeping your day jobs and just making media at home. I also featured a cool video podcast from a website called Indie Mogul. I thought all of you would find their content interesting since it seems right up our alley. They feature shows about do-it-yourself filmmaking, and they promise new content weekly. They seem to be off to a great start. This just in, our friends over at Ripple Training have released a series of Final Cut Pro tutorials called Final Cut Pro 6 on 6. These tutorials cover mixed format editing, working with motion templates, audio enhancements, the smooth cam filter, and integration with motion, soundtrack pro, and color. The tutorials run just under an hour and cost a mere 29 bucks. They do great work, highly recommended. Next up, I've added a page to MacMediaCast.com called Video Archives, where you can find everything we produce. Full episodes, tutorials, single segments, even the Mac Pro Podcast archives, all in a handy dandy pop-up video player with channels. This is a video player from Brightcove, and they've built in cool viral video attributes that allow you to share, email, embed these videos on your own website. So we say, feel free, share away. So we're working very hard to make MacMediaCast.com your resource for all things media and Mac on the net. Check us out, send us an email, let us know what you want to see. Well, that's it, my virtual friends. Another episode of the Mac Media Cast. We're very glad you're here, very glad you subscribed. I want to mention something I didn't mention last week in our first episode. A special thanks to Von Glitchka, and I hope I'm saying your name right. Um, a very great designer who did our logo um, and helped do a little bit of design and work with us on that. Now, you might recognize some of his handiwork uh, from the Mac Roundtable podcast or some of my Mac Roundtable partners in crime. So thanks again, Von. Uh, check out his work and his podcasts at Von Stern. Com. So speaking of the Mac Roundtable podcast, I got an email this week from Tim Verporten mentioning that I should probably settle down my wiggling logo on the bottom of the screen. So Tim, that's for you. So keep those emails coming, keep dropping by the website, and keep your logos wiggling. Wherever you are, I hope you have a great week, and we will see you all next week.